Okay, and now the most important person of the day, of the morning, has arrived. The finance minister outside North Block with her entire team and the most important document in her hand. Uh, I'm more attracted by the extraordinary beautiful sari that she's yeah. wearing. Uh, but uh, <coughs> I think the contents of the file in her hand are going to be more important for the next, uh, what, five, six hours at least. We're going to sit glued to every word, every punctuation mark in that uh, uh, document. And uh, I guess all of us are also worried about what will be our take-home pay, what will our in investments fetch us. No, but I, I completely agree that Sari is breathtaking. And you know, uh, and it's Nirmala's matching with the Bahi Katha. It is. And you know, Nirmala Sitaraman has always encouraged local artisans. And she's, you know, throughout the course of her... Uh, her tenure. I'm her ready to encourage anybody if I can get a sari like that. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. We don't have to wait too long to find out what's inside that bahi khata. But we have uh, two gentlemen joining us here now. They don't need any introduction. Nilesh and Nilesh. So we have Nilesh into two. Uh, double trouble or, <laughs> or double dhamaka. Let's see what it is. But uh, folks, how are you feeling about uh, the budget, Nilesh? So this time budget is coming on a pitch which is very, very easy. Oil is likely to be down, coal is likely to be down, fertilizer is likely to be down. So your subsidy burden will be less. Uh, this time India is on the outlier, but on the right side. Our growth is higher than global average. Inflation is lower than developed world. And our housing market is in better place. Uh, we'll have fiscal deficit on the lower side. Uh, so everything is you know, kind of on a very, very easy pitch. Now we just have to hope that there are no googlies being delivered to us. Mm. And this is a very, very fast changing world. So googlies will come, but hopefully we are better prepared to play. You know, the last panel we had uh, uh, was telling us that the bottom of the pyramid perhaps needs uh, some help. Uh, you know, people right at the bottom strata of the economy. Is that something which, uh, Nilesh, you think uh, you know, we'll see? Undoubtedly, there is a subdued consumption across many items, especially in rural India. And we have a fantastic experience of credit guarantee scheme for small and medium enterprises. This year, SME credit growth is 30%, whereas the overall bank credit growth is about 15%. Now, can we create a credit guarantee mechanism for microfinance institutions, which goes and reduces borrowing cost for bottom of the pyramid? Our vegetable vendor, our uh, driver, their borrowing cost is 25, 30, 40, maybe 100%. If we can reduce their borrowing costs, that will improve consumption. So there is a need to support consumption at the bottom end of the pyramid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, an ECLGS kind of scheme for rural India and an MNREGS kind of urban India scheme is what people have been speaking to us. Uh, Nilesh, is India at the moment in buy zone? I mean, top down because of the significant fall that we've seen? Oh, clearly, um, India is in the buy zone. I think uh, the correction that we have seen, uh, especially since the start of the calendar year, mm. uh, I probably think is a healthy correction. I think it, it's leading to consolidation. Um, and it's not just the consolidation that we've seen for the last one month, yeah. but it's actually now about 12 to 14 months. If I were to kind of look at the peak that we kind of uh, reached in October 21, we're still around there, the 18,000 kind of plus minus 500 points. Um, so I think uh, India comes into the buying zone. India is in the buying zone. Uh, the earnings growth has been good, so it's looking to kind of plateau a bit, but it's still kind of very, very healthy. Mm. And especially for the world at large, there's so much of, uh, you know, um, uh, growth happening here. Uh, and I think, uh, and, and they have really not put the dollars behind essentially what's happening in India right now. Mm. Um, so I think there's, there continues to be a very, very strong case. Okay, by the way, I just wanted to take a quick look at what's happening in the pre-opening. Um, so the rupee has opened stronger, by the way, as we head into the budget. 81.77 is where the rupee is at. This compares to 81.90 or so that we closed in yesterday. And for the markets as well, looks like it's going to be a good opening. The Nifty is up 180 points in pre-opening, led by some of the Adani Group stocks that have staged a comeback. Adani Enterprises, Adani Ports, some of the large banks. HDFC Bank is up 2.5%. There's SBI that's up 2%. In fact, banks have had the steepest fall in the month of January. So names like SBI are down about 15%. And that brings me uh, to the next question, right? Because of this entire Adani Group issue, banks have had a, a steep fall. Is this a good time from a long-term investment standpoint to perhaps deploy some money here? Undoubtedly, banks, as we call it, in the Cinderella time right now, it's a party time going on. We just don't know whether it's 6 o'clock in the evening or 12 o'clock in the night. <laughs> NPAs are low. 
interest rates are rising, so margins are expanding. The bank deposit growth is a little bit under pressure, but there is enough liquidity for bank deposit growth to maintain momentum. Mm -hmm. Credit growth is at a decadal high level. Put all these things together, and on top of it, there is consolidation in banking business. And this is one of those rare periods where your foreign cost of borrowing is actually mm -hmm. higher than the Indian cost of borrowing. So people are repaying foreign debt to borrow from Indian debt, uh, from Indian banks. So overall banking system is in Cinderella time. I just hope and pray this is 6 o'clock in the evening and not 11.59 <laughs> in the night. But is privatization of uh, PSU banks a growth lever for uh, the government? Uh, definitely. Uh, PSU banks have been re-rated, they have bounced back. And as Jan Jeshan has kept on saying on various channels, it can give about 1 lakh to 1 lakh 50 thousand crore of bonanza. Mm. So can we now privatize or create a public private partnership for banks so that in public sector also we create more HDFC banks and Kotak banks and ICSA banks of the world? Oh, oh, well, you ask the buyers, potential buyers, uh, you don't get such a vociferous answer. Like Air India, will they take away the pension liabilities? You know, these are the questions they come with. So, I mean, you, you, when you get down to it, I appreciate the problem that Tuhin Kanta Pandey or the buyers will face, especially when it comes to banks. So, uh, I'm sure you have read this headline that Air India is likely to be an operating profit this yes, year. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. The turnaround in just one year. I know, they were losing, amazing. what, 25 crores a day or something like that. Absolutely. So, that's, that's a very, very important news. But taking away the debt, everybody will come to that. Take away the debt and take away the pensions and then I'll buy. You know... Uh, anyway, let's see what they say on privatization. You know, uh, Nilesh of Envision, what, yeah. if, you're, if you're instructing, say, your research team, <laughs> assume that we are reporting to you, tell us which three things we should look at in the budget and which three things should not be there. So the three things which I would look for are, one is essentially uh, the entire focus on infrastructure, uh, including basically plays like capital goods, capex, capital equipment companies, in the sense that what is it in store for them in terms of outlays and, and the plan ahead. Uh, that clearly is today the strongest pillar of, uh, you know, yeah. the public market. So that's one area. Two is uh, what is in it for manufacturing? Uh, of course, a lot has been done through the PLI scheme, but is that kind of getting further broad-based? Is it getting deepened? Are outlays increasing? What new sectors get covered because of that? Because clearly, exports is our way to prosperity. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, there are limitations of the domestic market, domestic consumption, and it's only if we start addressing global markets in a magnified way, I think, is, is really the panacea for us. Mm -hmm. So that's the second uh, big area that I would look for. The third, I know it's not within the ambit of the of the budget, uh, but clearly is there decontrol happening for sectors like oil and gas or alcohol? These are two very large sectors uh, where still there is a lot of controls happening out there. Uh, and I think, uh, is there is there a path in this budget for, for decontrol of these two big sectors? And lastly, is more money being left in the hands of the middle class? We talked earlier about consumption being a little subdued. And the only way out of this is to still leave more money in the hands of the middle class, which means, of course, probably increasing exemption limits and things of that kind. So these are the four uh, areas that I would look for. And the fifth area is essentially on the housing side. I mean, you know, of course, uh, exemptions uh, on the interest you pay on loans uh, has been increased over a period of time. But is there a further increase out there? Because clearly, housing is the force multiplier for our economy. Mm. It helps everybody. It's a win-win for all. So these are the five big pockets that I would really look out for. Actually, our colleague Parikshit had reported last mm. Friday that uh, they could be relief for the middle class. I mean, a new ca tax lap could be introduced between 8 to 10 lakhs. You know, the tax rate for this category could be lowered. People earning about 30 lakhs, uh, about 10 lakhs. I mean, the tax rate could be lowered from 30% currently to 25%. So uh, the indication is that there will be something uh, for uh, the salaried class. Now, the other part of Lata's question was what should not be there? So uh, the one thing is capital gains. I mean, we talk about it every year. Any, how do you think about this subject? Uh, the more focus has, not, has been on not the change in the tax rate, but uh, harmonization of, uh, you know, the holding period and what enables one to be eligible for the lower, longer-term uh, tax rate across asset classes. Mm -hmm. Is that possible? It's possible, but I <laughs> hope it doesn't happen. I still think that equities deserves to be a preferred kind of a class or an asset class. Mm. Uh, so you're saying that uh, the harmonization, if it happens, will happen upwards? 
equities will go from 1 to 2 or 3 it will not come lower no 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 <laughs> in fact it should come lower i am actually in the in the, in the in the camp that there should not be any tax on long term capital gains on equities yeah. but obviously that's wishful thinking wow. that's like kind of daydreaming uh, it, i don't think it will happen but that's what i would want to happen i would okay. want us to return back to the pre 2018 era yeah. uh, because we're still kind of in in a very early stage of our cycle of capital formation mm. uh, we need to encourage risk we need to encourage entrepreneurship uh, we need to encourage investors and those right. numbers if you look at it statistically are still minuscule right. if i look at you know the penetration of mutual funds equity ownership number of dmat accounts they all have galloped mm. but still are kind of minuscule in comparison to where they can be mm. Mm. Um, so i think that of course i'm i stand for you know elimination of ltcg on equities uh, but i mean that's like kind Nirish, of you're expecting your, too your much thoughts, anything which so can come uh, my recommendation yeah. is that please plug the text loophole mm. okay. I am a gold medalist chartered accountant, but I have never practiced. But still, I can suggest, please stop conversion of interest income into capital gain through government strips and zero coupon listed debentures. That's about 5,000 crore in tax saving. Mm. Please ensure that inter scheme of between ULIP scheme is taxed. Six lakh, six lakh crore AUM, assume 30 percent switches and 10 percent gains. That's about 3,600 crore taxation. SME exchanges, there is capital gains tax planning going on. Please stop that. Mm. It needs to be stopped. Uh, there is indexation on gold. We have already invested more than what we needed to invest in gold as a country for a few generations. Now, let's deter investment in gold by removing gold indexation. Mm. You do this kind of tax loopholes plugging, and then there is this bonus stripping of uh, shares and other things. Plug the tax loophole and don't alter the capital, capital gains, gains tax sure. rate. Mm. There's a perception that capital gains tax is taxed at concessional rate. That's not true. On the floor of parliament, we had suggested STT in lieu of capital gains. Yeah. Now, STT is there, capital gains is there. So there's no concessional taxation rate. It's a double taxation. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, uh, fair enough. Uh, I mean, I guess many of these could have been done even through normal circulars and notifications. You don't really need a budget absolutely. to plug tax loopholes. They just need to create a, like ethical hacking, ethical tax loophole plugging competition. Mm. There are many brilliant the CS who will help. If you read the uh, chapter two yes. or three of uh, the economic survey yesterday, he has posted a series of things they've done to do exactly this to encourage uh, more trust-based uh, uh, taxation stuff like that. I guess. That'll go on. But let's talk sectors. I mean, people are listening to you. Banking, hands down, both of you. Uh, what else? So generally, we have seen that uh, ahead of election, infrastructure spending is increased. Okay. Mm. We have already seen mm. increase in infrastructure spending as a percentage of mm. GDP as well as yeah. as a percentage of total outlay. More importantly, because of G20 and election, the execution will be faster. So across infrastructure sector, there will be opportunities. Mm. The second sector... One area there is railways, uh, Nilesh. We had CG Power Management with us yesterday who was saying that they are expecting, and they put a number to it, Ooh. 400 new Vande Bharat trains to be announced. I mean, that was a very specific, <laughs> I thought... Uh, I hope there are some local trains <laughs> as well in <laughs> Mumbai. Nilesh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, uh, what sectors other than banks? I think other than banks, but within the whole sc uh, scope of um, credit are specialized lenders. Uh, Lata, we've now seen at least half a dozen very specialized lenders who've gone through both good cycles and bad cycles, who at least come out to be at least good underwriters of credit. Mm -hmm. um, and they are growing at a ferocious pace. I mean, bad times, good times, they still kind of continue to be growing at 20, 25, 30 percent um, and still continue to enjoy high you know, spreads and NIMS and all. And it doesn't look to be just the current phenomena. Uh, it's something which they've gone through cycles. So I think uh, that's a very, very... Uh, you're, look, you're thinking of Chola's numbers, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I want... Uh, yeah. had, uh, the numbers Absolutely. were good. No yeah. sticking away. So I think specialized lenders will do better than banks. Okay. So, um, just so gonna that's very to... important because uh, I think NBFCs have not had the look-in. Just going to ask you all to hold that thought because we have uh, 10 Majaj seconds left numbers. for the markets to open as well. Uh, in just about six seconds, markets will open. Yes, numbers have come through from Escorts and Bajaj Auto. Escorts are looking pretty good, so perhaps there are some green Bajaj shoots. Bajaj Auto was less than in, the uh, the, Bajaj Auto was less, yeah, because they have that exports problem as well. 
but the rural market, we were talking about that. I mean, Escort's numbers looking pretty good. So we'll get that on the screen. But here's the first take uh, just a couple of hours before the budget. The market is open in the green, 100 points higher for the Nifty. The advanced decline ratio is well in favor of the advances over 1,800 stocks, and the banks are charging ahead, ahead of the budget. So 360 points higher for the bank Nifty. Let's look at the top constituents. ICICI Bank is topping the charts, followed by Kotak Mahindra Bank. You have a lot of the consumption names. Uh, this time around, ahead of the elections, there is an expectation that there could be uh, some, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, Manrega or MSP hike sort of schemes given to the rural market as well. And that could boost consumption. So, Britannia, Dabur, ITC, HUL are all in the green right now. On ITC, of course, whether tobacco tax comes or not, that is the big question. It hasn't come in the last three years. So, going by what the stock is showing right now, it's very tentative. Let's see how that plays out. On the downside, though, just a couple of stocks. Adani Enterprises, a tad bit in the red, followed by Sipla. A couple of these pharma stocks are on the back foot, but uh, really, it's a good-looking screen. I mean, the market has opened front foot forward, 128 points higher, holding firmly at that 70,400 mark, which was the earlier low. And, of course, the 200 DMA is also holding for now. The Nifty inching towards the 17,800 mark. So, good opening for the market. Maybe front we foot forward and lofting for a six is... Chola investment. <laughs> Up 7.5%. I mean, what a start. Excellent numbers. And likewise, Indian hotels. Again, a very good set of numbers. I think best quarter in uh, years or probably the best quarter on record. They're also up 3.5%. Uh, uh, RVNL. I, my sense is, you know, RVNL, IRFC, all those uh, railway-related stocks are doing very well. Expectation. I, I guess you know, it's traders playing the long game, uh, expecting that uh, there would be some uh, goodies for these, if you even if you looked at the economic survey, the big investments in capex have been railways, roads, and defence. So I think all those stocks are getting played. A bit of pressure in Adani Power, but some of the other Adani stocks, Wilmar and all, have come out of the way. Right, and absolutely. And just a few other names, uh, Lata. Just uh, highlighting what's got volumes. Adani Total is the one which is down seven percent. Oh, yes. uh, uh, power, of course, you mentioned. Enterprises <laughs> is down three quarters of a percent. Uh, and there is uh, Coal India, which is down about one. LNT. I mean, these are flat changes, but all of these moves have got volumes. Adani Transmission has uh, recovered a bit uh, over the last couple of days, but uh, it's down about one percent uh, this morning. On the upside, apart from what we already mentioned, Adani Green is up about two and a half percent. That is the uh, name which comes up. And Wilmar, Adani Wilmar also sold off. Uh, you know, I think the daily limit is five percent there for a few more than a few sessions has been down. It's up three and a half. So Green and uh, Wilmar, those two names are looking up. Sriram Finance is up about three percent, three and a quarter percent. I think did well yesterday. Did uh, does well right now. At, at least at open. Star Health saw a decent move yesterday. Star Health also, I think, reported numbers four and a half percent higher there. Dixon has been a complete washout after earnings. Dixon uh, starts three percent uh, in the green, and I think uh, we've got a bunch of other moves uh, which are also uh, emerging. 100 points uh, on uh, the Nifty right now. Sorry. I just want to make one point on a couple of these auto stocks. m, &M yeah. actually has hit a fresh high today and it's important because a lot has been done for the electric vehicle space as far as taxation is concerned. Remember the taxation on buying an EV, on renting an EV and on charging an EV has been reduced. GST has been brought down from 18% to 5%, 12% to 5%. Now in this budget, the expectation is that other ancillary spaces, whether it's battery swapping, other technology, could be uh, you know, given some subsidies as well. And the auto sector is doing pretty well. Escorts too reported a good set of numbers. In fact, a quick comment, uh, Nilesh, from you on uh, the auto space. Anything incremental that you're expecting? And from an investment standpoint, do you still like the space? Uh, in terms of the budget, uh, I don't think there's going to be anything which is going to come in for the conventional auto stuff. Um, if at all, it will any measure, it would still be to kind of, uh, kind of in a way, propel the EV space and ensure that we move faster towards basically green energy and decarbonization. So I think on the EV side, you could still have further rebates and, and all of that. But I don't think otherwise anything specifically can come in for the auto side. Mm -hmm. The other area can be maybe how do you still further push exports of auto. I mean, we've already demonstrated, I think, both Maruti, Suzuki, Hyundai, all have become big uh, kind of, you know, uh, uh, organizations which are exporting. Mm -hmm. But I think how do you get more uh, players to come in, set up specialized export zones for auto itself? I think that's that could be an area that one can look forward to. All right, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's bring in Sanjay Dutt also, who's joining in. He's director of Quantum Securities. Uh, Sanjay, great to have you with us here as always. Important day, big day. 
uh, and how big, of course, is something I think we'll uh, find out uh, in a couple of hours from now. But what is your sense, uh, Sanjay? Can the bu budgets in the past, I mean, it's not always consistent, but they have proven to be a bit of a turning point for markets. Do you think this one could be uh, one of those? Markets have been selling off coming into this one uh, over the last two weeks or so. Your, th your thoughts? I think we can't hear Sanjay. Uh, Sanjay, I think you're on mute. Mm -hmm. You'll have to unmute yourself. I think we still have uh, a little bit of issue there in terms of uh, the uh, audio. We'll fix that and come back. Nilesh, this entire uh, saga, I mean, the last couple of sort of days of sell-off that we've seen, is this, is this episode finally firmly behind or you think there are issues which will linger? So there will be cross-divergence of two flows. Mm. One, active foreign investors are finding many mm. cheaper markets like China, Brazil, South Africa, Mexico. Short-term technical money will move out of India to those cheaper markets. The long-term strategic money, like the private equity venture capital, same way there are patient money in listed market also. They'll continue to do bargain hunting in India on correction. The second thing is the passive flows. As US interest rates start speaking out, the flow towards emerging market will start. And India will get 14% of MSCI emerging market flows. So we will see active FPI selling because of valuation, but passive FPIs and long-term FPIs buying in the market. Okay. By the way, the uh, FMCG space is the one that's really surging right now. Britannia is your top uh, nifty gainer up almost about 3 odd percent. And a lot of these rural focused, uh, you know, spaces in the broader markets also doing pretty well. Chola Investment we spoke about, Shiram Finance, something like a Star Health. Um, and, uh, you know, just watch out for these names. Uh, in fact, Sanjay, I'll tell you, you know, I'll tell you, probably for the FMCG space, mm. there is some uh, report by the PMEAC uh, which is arguing for a universal basic income, basically, you know, uh, promote consumption at the bottom of the pyramid. So perhaps there is some hope that there's some income transfer uh, uh, program. It's possible that mm. uh, that's working its magic. Okay. FMCGs, Nilesh? Okay. Yeah, I think FMCG looks good, um, especially after the kind of underperformance or the Definitely. price declines that we have seen over the last one year or so. A lot of them are probably off 20, 30 percent from their from their highs. Mm. The challenge uh, still is in terms of the demand. Uh, you know, the demand is still kind of mid single digit. That's what it has been. But I still think that, you know, a couple of years back when other mm. engines of the markets were not firing, uh, they clearly obviously were right there on top. But today, they have to compete with spaces like capital goods, railways, defense, specialized lenders, banks, which are all growing at 20, 25 percent in terms of their earnings. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I think, becomes a challenge from an allocation point of view. So maybe, yes, five years, eight years, the long-term India consumption story is pretty much intact. Mm -hmm. It's structural in nature. But I think for a few more quarters, uh, they could probably at best be market performers. Okay, by the way, lenders look so much better than NBFC. <laughs> by the way, I just wanted to mention that uh, the Sensex is now back above 60,000 and uh, it's the highest point of trade for the Nifty. Uh, poetic perhaps as we head into the biggest day of the financial calendar. Uh, good going on the market, 130 points higher. In fact, uh, just stay on Sanjay Dutt, I think uh, is joining Sanjay in as well. Uh, Sanjay, if you can hear us now, the discussion is on rural wage growth, right, which has been, I think, declining for three years in a row. So Nilesh was just telling us that perhaps something can be done to ease the burden financially for a lot of the uh, rural part of the market, maybe MSMEs, make, give them easier loans, etc. Uh, what are you expecting? What could the government do to boost consumption uh, in the lower end of the pyramid? I really could add much on what we talked about, the budget, what the government can do. We're still an hour or so away. But the fact is that, you know, uh, giving whatever incentive possible to the lower middle class, enhancing consumption, because I think the biggest incentive you can probably give is to increase infrastructure spending, because that is a dual impact. You go down across the hinterland and you create more infrastructure. India still needs infrastructure. You create jobs. You obviously improve productivity. That's, I think, the simplest way and the most productive way to do it than just doling out subsidies or anything to improve rural consumption. But... I think all this is uh, probably sealed and already coming coming our way. But on a broader issue, I think uh, the markets are on a consolidation phase right now. Uh, 
They would remain so over the next six odd months. But there are select opportunities that you may find in the B group stocks, in the second rung stocks, where uh, I think they are much better placed. But larger stocks are more or less, uh, you know, got all the positives in the price for FY24 and some even FY25. Mm. So, Sanjay, you're sounding a little, uh, uh, a little cautious overall, right? So, irrespective of whatever comes out of the budget, the market may uh, stay a little ranged, even uh, drift lower. Is that, is that the view? I think so, because I think from the larger caps perspective, we've got all the positives in there. Mm. And uh, I don't see anything that's going to give us leadership to take the Nifty up by another 1,000, 1,500 points, because then we'll be stretched compared to the other emerging markets, as what Nilesh was saying, that, you know, we ultimately have to be part of the EM flows, and there are markets which are much more attractive compared to us. We've outperformed last year. So, therefore, we need the earnings to catch up, which obviously will take time. For India's story, long-term is intact. But talking about the immediate three, six months, I think we may take time on the indices. But within the market, in the lower end of the market, you may find opportunity. <clears throat> you know, there was a, a lot of uh, uh, attraction for chemical companies. Uh, we used to talk about them a great deal a couple of years back. Has that theme played out? You, Nilesh, first. So one is business point of view, other is market point of view. Business point of view, they are like the generic pharma or IT sector. India's market share in global chemical markets will continue to grow and we will become a dominant player just like we are in generic pharma or IT. Now from a stock market point of view, we were discounting probably 10 years <laughs> of earnings in chemical sector at one point of time. So there was a need to take a little bit of breather, let fundamentals okay. catch up with prices and then again make them move ahead. Mm -hmm. So business wise, no problem, chemical sector will do very well. Stock price point of view, there is a need to catch the breather and let fundamentals catch up with the valuation. No, I say, say, Nilesh, yeah. if envision, do you also play, uh, you know, the railway stocks, uh, the defence stocks? Are these themes that you concentrate on? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is clearly uh, one of our big focus areas. Uh, and what we're seeing is some really solid traction. I mean, traction in terms of the order books that they are of seeing or the funnel, the pipeline, um, the kind of areas which the government is going to open up for the private sector. Um, so I think this is a huge area and a huge focus area for us. How, how do you do that, Nilesh? Which subject? names? What kind of names? So we've been owning a basket of both the PSU pack as well as the private, especially on the defense side, there are some really high quality PSU names. Mm. Uh, and because they have pretty much an embedded en entitlement, which means that if there is a company making missiles, there's not going to be any other company which is going to start making missiles. Mm -hmm. It's going to remain within their privy, within... But defense, their... not railways, or railways mm -hmm. as well. In railways, I don't think there's any PSU out there. There are all private names. There are companies which make wagons. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there are proxy plays. So we earlier talked about CG Power, mm -hmm. how they are uh, kind of doing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an auto component company which we own called Gabriel, which also kind of makes, uh, you know, uh, their products for the railways. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so you could play it that way as well. So it's a combination uh, of the way you Plate one, some which are dedicated plays and some which are a kind of a mixed plays. Sanjay, it has a similar question to you actually. Since you started off by saying, uh, you know, infrastructure, how are you playing that theme? Are you also like uh, Nilesh was saying, railway stocks, uh, railway parts makers? What do you What do you mean when you say infrastructure? Was that for me? Yes, yes, Sanjay, for you. Okay. You know, what I think is that uh, a lot of companies which are involved in contracting, construction, haven't performed in the next five to seven, in the last five to seven years. Mm. And if you're talking about capex spend in the budget, we're talking about, you know, uh, creation of getting back the private consumption, uh, private capex cycle, etc. You know, I would look at companies like, you know, SKF, Carbon Random Universal, or other companies like, you know, maybe the IRB infrastructure at the rice price. So these are the kind of companies which I think will get orders both on the base of uh, the manufacturing as well as the inter infrastructure spend. Of course, cement is a very obvious play mm. and a direct. Contrary to most people, I'm still bullish on metals this year. And I continue to have positions there. And I think we are set for a good metals rally. But there's only one point, Lata, that I want to make very important for retail investors. Mm. So the theme over the next 12 to 18 months is going to be value investing and is not going to be those high priced high earning multiples the go go you know high growth kind of investing so we need to go back and understand that we need to look at 
lower multiples, lower price to sales, lower price to earnings. Those are the companies which where we'll where we'll stand protected, and not the companies that we've got used to in the last two years. Like there's no logic for a chemical company was pure generic, doing not not much to get a multiple of 25, 30, 40. You know, I belong to the old school of thought. So therefore, I think. People have to realize that as to what you're paying, actually, and how, what are you going to get in the next two to three years. So mm. uh, what would your, 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 when you say value stocks, PSU banks, LNT, uh, Tata Power, those kinds of things? I'll give you two boring names which I own, and I, of course not recommending them, but I think they're really worth looking at right now. Gale, IOC. We talk about ethanol. Where is ultimately ethanol going to be sold? Ultimately, they will be sold. It's going to be sold at the IOC pumps or the BPCL pumps. Mm -hmm. IOC trade below book value, trade something like six or seven times cash to EV, not price earning multiple, cash to EV. Now people will turn around and say, oh, boring, PSU, nothing happens, blah, blah, blah. But we said the same thing about Mazagan Dock and Hindustan Aeronautics, et cetera, just two years back, and all the rail companies. And suddenly now everyone's chasing rail, defense, those kind of things. These themes develop in the market, but you would understand as to patiently when to buy them. When buy them, when no one was to buy them. Mm. Gale has the biggest gas infrastructure in the country. You can't do any manufacturing in India without gas. You can't do anything without gas. And no private gas player can do without Gale. So do your homework. These are just two ideas that came to my mind. I like yeah. boring stuff. I buy when no one wants to buy. No, 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 I, it ma Sanjay, it might <laughs> seem it uh, might seem boring on paper, but you know, on this ethanol theme, I mean, we were speaking with uh, Dwarike Sugar yesterday, mm -hmm. and they told us that from uh, uh, from around five crore liters last year, they'll do seven and a half crore liters this year, and ten crore liters of ethanol sales next year. So this is a theme which is really picking up. I mean, not yeah, boring so at so all, so to say the least. Like, yeah. My point is, where will that ethanol be sold? That seven and a half crore liter. Yeah. Ultimately, it has to be blended with fuel yeah. and sold. No? Uh, Sanjay, just yeah. sorry, uh, you know, the, you, <clears throat> but is it fair to kind of juxtapose sectors like defense P and they are PSUs? That's the commonality, but very different spaces, right? Uh, defense is one area where the government is pushing indigenization, make in India. There's nothing of that sort happening with uh, oil and gas. You mentioned IOC, and hence I'm picking that point. This is also a year in which you have seven, eight big state elections. Next year is general elections. Uh, it, it may be uh, sort of unloved right now, and that it's got that going for it. But beyond that, what else, Sanjay? You know, they've got such a large distribution network. Can you discount that? You know, people give me examples of Warren Buffett. Can you tell me why Warren Buffett is buying Chevron in the U.S. for the last five years? I'm not saying that, you know, the same parallel. But the question is, company with hard assets, cash flows, distribution networks, brand, they're not going to go away. Mm. They'll ultimately into new models, you know? And uh, so you have to look at them when no one wants to buy them. Mm -hmm. You can be wrong of them. So therefore, that's the reason why we've all been taught the fundamental lesson of investing. Mm -hmm. Stop losses. Buy something. Even if it goes on 30%, your hypothesis is wrong. Get out of it. Mm -hmm. But big money multiples are only made when you buy something which is boring but has inherent value and has inherent staying power in the economy. So... Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm not advocating IOC. It fits into my frame of investing, Gale, my frame of investing. A lot of people like momentum. A lot of people like different kind of way of doing. A lot of people don't like PSUs at all. Mm -hmm. But now look at the PSU bank. No one wanted to look at them. I was the one who talked about PSU banks two years back. I was yes. the one who talked about steel three years back. But I, that's why I gave you that half volley. I told you PSU bags, and I was hoping you will loft it for a six. I know that you've been a champion, and their day has definitely come under the sun. Well, IOC and BPCL, those kinds of companies will also be looking for getting reimbursed for some of the losses uh, that they've yeah. suffered, they've sold below price. So that is something will be something which we will know in the budget. It's clearly a budget play at this point in time, a binary. Uh, as well, there is some talk now of you know this take or pay agreement that IOCL has entered into with one of the Adani companies and it may, it may have to pay up. So today there's a bit of red uh, on those stocks. Uh, but uh, I think we've kept you all for a goodish bit and it's been most helpful. Thank you very much, Thank Nilesh you. and Nilesh, uh, for preparing us. And uh, let's see if... <coughs> Thanks uh, very much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's see what the budget delivers. Uh, uh, Sanjay, just a, a last word from you. You spoke about this uh, a, a PSU kind of stocks. Is there anything else that you have your eyes focused on? Uh, I mean, outside that, IT, finance, uh, 
uh, any other uh, kind of stocks, FMCG? I think a lot of CapEx related around the CapEx team, you know, mm -hmm. manufacturing and CapEx team, there are a large number mm -hmm. of players. Like I mentioned, one or two, like a Carver Random. I own Carver Random. Uh, mm -hmm. Similarly, there are many companies like these who provide inputs to various industries, which we ignore. Some graphite players, maybe. I'm not saying I don't own any graphite players, but I'm just giving you a broad example as to what you can look at. So, if you're, you know, really talking about the India manufacturing theme, anyone who's providing both consumable and non-consumable manufacturing inputs is really going to do big business in the next two years. And a lot of the stuff is available at much cheaper multiples than the fancy names we all look at. And similarly, you know, in the auto ancillary space, mm. people who export, people who are domestic suppliers are available at very attractive valuations. It is that one needs to do work and one needs to buy stuff when it's not on a go-go phase, not in a fancy. We guys normally get dragged in with whatever is happening in the market. We want to write the, <clears throat> you know, theme that's running. And then we normally land up buying at the wrong time. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. That time, there's a lot of hard work. Yeah. No, no. Remember, Prashant, we were discussing shipping last time, ship yeah. builders. When I mentioned there was just $4 billion of the entire shipping, ship building and ship repairing industry. Yeah. And look, in six months' time, we had the likes of Mazagan Dock and Cochin Shipyard. Yeah. So, you know, this is the kind of stuff you need to look around for. No, absolutely. I completely agree. My only point with oil marketing is, you know, I used to track it at one point, maybe uh, in 2004, 2005, for a few years. It's a... You know, uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a complicated sector, first of all, and second, it's also very politically sensitive, right? Uh, that's all. That's all the point that's I was fine. making. But I take all your points, which you got to buy when no one wants to buy it. Uh, that's the, uh, you know. Ultimately, Hindustan Aeronautics and Hindustan, you know, Bharat Dynamics are happening. Yeah. So. Got it, got mm -hmm. it. Uh, Sanjay, it's always a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and uh, sort of uh, running us through what you're making of things. 80 points, by the way, uh, 17,744. By the way, the market's come off a little bit uh, and uh, things are looking uh, a little uh, off the highs. It was an highs. exuberant start, yeah. so just about 20 points off highs. Uh, yeah, we close, it, we close it to the day low, by the way, now is about 17,735. And we're at 17,745. So closer to the lows mm. than to the high. The high has been made at 17,815 today. Mm. Uh, so off by a fair bit. Now, the one space which perhaps we'll see a fair bit of announcements, and the government is very clear uh, in terms of pushing this, is renewables, new energy, uh, you know, green hydrogen. We have uh, someone uh, who, uh, you know, will be able to explain to us uh, in a very nice, simple way uh, what all of this uh, would mean and how, uh, what should we expect f from this space in the budget. Ashish Bhandari is Managing Director and CEO at Thermax. Ashish, great to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Uh, as I said, I mean, the key word there is uh, simple because this is a new space. We only learn from uh, when we speak with you and others like you, Ashish. But in this space, you know, this new energy space, green hydrogen, etc., what should we look out for uh, in the union budget today? <clears throat> is it allocations? Is it new uh, policy reform? Uh, wh what exactly? Go on. Morning. Good morning to, to you and to all your viewers. Um, as the announcement early in January pointed out, the government's allocating 20,000 crores mm. towards um, building a new hydrogen or a green hydrogen economy in India. Mm. I suspect in this budget, we will start to see details, some details of this coming out, though it wouldn't be a surprise if we don't see too many details now, mm. uh, but uh, details will surely come in forthcoming quarters. The couple of big things people are looking for is one, a specific allocation for PLI to be building, to build electrolyzers uh, in India. Okay. So this would be a manufacturing based PLI of which the broad contours have already been circulated. Now the expectation is the formal PLI will come out very soon and this budget will show mm. an allocation towards that uh, PLI from, uh, from a government perspective. Okay. The second thing is uh, to kickstart some of these hydrogen projects, uh, the government's allocated the majority of those 20,000 crores for. So okay. the form that this uh, kickstart will take, whether it is uh, VGF, which is gap funding for projects, which is, whether it is specific uh, debt financing for these projects, some of those details will become available. Okay. Uh, the third part is allocation for some uh, what is called as hydrogen valley-based projects, which are 
demonstration projects across India, uh, what kind of funding will be available? We will, uh, there is an announcement that is expected on that front as well. Mm. Uh, finally, which I don't think will come in the budget, will come out separately, is mandatory requirements for certain industries, especially refining, fertilizers, fertilizer and city gas distribution, to use certain part of their uh, needs from green hydrogen. Okay. So, so those are the four big buckets. Um, I don't know if all uh, all of the first three buckets will sure. get called out in the budget, but I surely one of them. Got, got that, got that. That's the basic premise on which we're going into the budget. But the last time we spoke, Ashish, you said that presently, uh, you know, green hydrogen and the rollout is not commercially viable because of the cost attached to it. Green hydrogen is still much more expensive than uh, grey hydrogen. And you did mention that um, there is some amount of, of course, subsidy support, etc. But the government can do a lot more to bring down the cost. Do you think there's anything on that front that you would expect in the budget? Um, not sure, because some things are now partly part of the centre. The bigger part, which I had said last time as well, mm -hmm. the biggest cost of producing green hydrogen is actually the cost of electricity. Mm -hmm. And the cost of electricity is driven by where you produce electricity, which we are seeing can become as cheap as two and a half, three rupees. But then how do you get this electricity to the point at which you're producing hydrogen with the minimum amount of transmission charges and minimum cost. Um, and that is partly the center subject, but uh, in a bigger way, that is a state subject. And so I expect some of this will be the centers in the states working together in terms of how do you cut down some of these additional costs that are involved in electricity transportation in getting this to the point at which you're providing electricity. Once you get it to the point at which you can provide electricity, then uh, cost of electrolyzers, cost of water, some of the other balance of plant, all of these other elements come into play. That with manufacturing and scale, we can bring down the cost of substantially. By most counts, um, electrolyzers will become um, less than half the cost effectively within a three year period of time. Yeah, by becoming more efficient, uh, economies of scale, all of those, and including local production, all of those other kinds of things. Uh, so there's a lot of technology and manufacturing scale element also that's at play. The biggest place where government can help is focus on the electricity part and getting the demand generation, which mm. is getting certain industries to mandatorily use green hydrogen. Yeah, the point taken, Ashish, I'm just wondering whether the budget will only make a broad sweep of statement uh, in the past, they have not gone into the nitty-gritties of a PLI, whether it's for electrolyzers for, or for anything. That's usually come outside the budget. So probably today we may get a big capex number and an announcement of preference for, uh, you know, climate change catalyzers like green hydrogen. Uh, perhaps we won't get the nitty-gritties. But yes, that is an important theme, even if you look at the economic survey. Thank you very much, Ashish. We will touch base with you to understand the details as and when they are announced, there's a goodish bit of jargon we'll need, help, we'll need your help with. But now let's go over to a special panel that Shireen has with her with respect to what India Inc. is expecting. Over to you, Shireen. Well, thanks very much, guys. Yes, we are counting down to the union budget. And, of course, it's, uh, the wish list has uh, been done and dusted. Let's see what the finance minister finally delivers in a short while from now. But joining me uh, from Fiki, Shubhrakant Panda, the president of Fiki, and uh, Sanjeev Mehta of HUL. Uh, gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on the program. Sanjeev Mehta, you know, every time the budget comes around, there are graphic plates ready on what is going to be more expensive and what is going to be cheaper. What are you bracing yourself for in the context that everyone hopes or at least is confident that this could be the budget that delivers for the middle class. Yeah, thanks, Shireen. Uh, morning, everyone, to the viewers. Uh, you know, I would say that first and foremost, it has to be a growth-oriented budget. You know, when the growth is good, all other indices fall in place. The next is, I don't think there would be any knee-jerk reactions from the government. They would try to ensure that the fiscal deficit uh, you are in the direction of consolidation. There should be more CapEx expenditure, maybe not the same percentage increase as the previous year. I don't think there would be any tax increases because this is a time when you want to give a boost to consumption, when you want to 
put more money in the hands of more people. So I don't think there would be more tax increases, rate increase. But I think the government's focus on increasing tax as a percentage of GDP through better collection, through plugging loopholes, all those are going to be the measures which will continue. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Sanjeev Mehta, yesterday's economic survey, the headline chapter was that the recovery is now complete. Uh, it is now time as far as resurgence is concerned, and that's the thematic that we're going with here on CNBC TV 18 for the budget as well. Uh, where do you believe uh, the, the growth drivers can come as far as this budget is concerned? CapEx is given, whether it's real or outside of that, and of course a big hope as far as defense is concerned. But where do you believe the growth drivers are likely to come this time around? What will be the big numbers that you're going to be watching out for? Big numbers one would be watching on is uh, public capital expenditure, no question about that. The second is one would be looking at what is the outlay on Manrega, because we must understand that inflation has taken a toll on the wallets of uh, people at the bottom of pyramid. So the government would try to alleviate their suffering, certainly in rural India. And uh, in case the government has the capacity, then if they can put more money in the hands of middle class, it would act good from a consumption perspective. Shubhrakan Panda, let me come to you now. What's the big expectation as we count down to the budget? Uh, of course, CapEx is a given, and I think the survey made that point very clearly, that even though there are incipient signs of private sector capital formation, the government will continue to do the heavy lifting as far as CapEx goes. Outside of that, what's the industry most confident of by way of delivery in this budget? Well, uh, good morning, uh, Shireen, first of all, uh, to you uh, and your viewers. Uh, as Sanjeev mentioned, I think the overwhelming expectation is that it will be a growth-oriented budget, uh, simply because uh, I, I think we are very well-placed in terms of, um, uh, of uh, uh, revenue buoyancy. And, uh, I mean, you know, including uh, uh, January uh, the GST collections being the second highest uh, ever, I think that's a, that's a very good omen. Uh, heading, uh, heading into into the budget presentation today, um, and in that in that context, I, I mean, I would just like to reiterate what Sanjeev mentioned: is that uh, we are certainly seeing uh, or expecting a, a significant outlay for uh, for public uh, sector uh, uh, capex uh, to 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 uh, continue providing a boost to the economy, uh, and uh, uh, and measures which will uh, which will attract uh, global supply chains to India. Uh, thereby, as I said, the manufacturing sector getting a boost, uh, which is imperative from an uh, India uh, growth point of view. Uh, just to reiterate, as we all know, that um, you know, agri sector uh, being what 17, 18 percent of uh, of uh, GDP and 45 percent of uh, jobs is is uh, not uh, tenable. And while services sector will certainly take up a lot of slack, it's done very well. I think most um, uh, most uh, uh, sectors such as uh, hotels, uh, travel, etc. Um, uh, are all uh, retail are all back to pre-pandemic levels, but uh, there's no taking away from the long-term importance of uh, manufacturing as far as India is concerned. Well, no taking away from the importance of manufacturing. You know, Fiki has put on the table a recommendation that the government should continue with the concessional tax rate of 15% for the next five years to provide a predictable roadmap to both domestic and global investors. The sun sets on that in 24. If that were not to happen, how disappointed would you two gentlemen be? Sanjeev Mehta, let me start by asking you. Ask we have because we are looking at it from a lens that it's a wonderful opportunity for the country to double down on manufacturing and attract global supply chains to India. You know, if it doesn't happen, it's not going to be the death knell of manufacturing in the country. Let's accept it. There's huge momentum. There's lots happening. PLI schemes are there. The tax rates have come down. But when the moment comes, one should not let any opportunity go by. That is the reason we are looking at if the government could extend it would create that much more difference between us and other countries who are competing for the same global supply chain. Okay, uh, you know, a man who joins me here uh, on our uh, fabulous set here in Delhi uh, would have otherwise been standing next to the finance minister on the way to parliament. The former revenue secretary, Tarun Bajaj, is right here with me in our studio. Mr. Bajaj, what an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Let me start by asking you, are you missing the action or are you feeling relieved? <laughs> I won't say it's either way. 
uh, one thing which is there is that uh, we all have to move on and I have moved on so I am very happy about it and I am sure the team that is there will do a great job of the budget. Well, you may have moved on from preparing the budget but we are not going to let you to move on from analyzing the fine print of the budget Mr. Bajaj. We are going to get you to comment on that but let me start by asking you, you know the two gentlemen there saying that the 15% concessional tax rate should get an extension for another five years. This is India's opportunity. This could be India's decade. The government should go all out. I know you have a difference of opinion there. Do you believe the government is likely to go that route? or hold back? I would not like to speculate as to what the budget would say. I'll wait for an hour and a half to see what the budget actually contains. But is there a case for that? Uh, I think uh, last time I had told FIKI or CII that they should give evidence for that and uh, I was reading somewhere there are about 1,300 uh, odd companies that have taken the benefit of 15% tax. So if there are a large number of companies that are coming uh, in the 15 percent and need some time, maybe there's a case, but it should be backed by facts. It should be backed by facts. Is there a case for a boost as far as consumption is concerned by way of cutting taxes? The expectation is that finally this budget could deliver on the aspirations of the middle class and provide that much needed relief. That's the expectation. I don't want you to speculate. I'm asking you, is there a case? Sanjeev Mehta believes that there could be a case to provide a consumption boost. Is there a case? I don't know whether you're asking that uh, should there be a reduction in the indirect taxes? Because no, in the direct taxes, on okay. personal income tax specifically. Okay. On the personal income tax, I have a very strong view which is backed by facts. I would say that out of about seven, seven and a half crore people who pay, who file returns, it's only about a crore who are actually paying taxes. The remaining six, six and a half crores are actually taking exemptions or just filing returns and not paying any taxes. So what are we talking about? Are we saying that these 1 crore people with 5 crore population or a 140 crore population is the one that is going to give a boost? I am not sure whether that is the right approach. You don't believe that there is a case then? I am not saying there is a case of... Uh, what I am saying is that uh, what... It's a larger question in the sense that in case there is a change in the personal income tax regime, it has to be a holistic one. It should not be an ad hoc one. And if there's a holistic one, one other thing which the government has to see with a lot of headwinds in the coming year, that there is not too much of revenue loss on account of the exemptions or on account of the concessions that are being given. So in that context, I would say the government has to tread very carefully and not get swayed by a request by a few people because in this country we have to broaden the base. There are many people, Mr. Bajaj, not a few people. There are requests pouring in from many sectors, many people and of course the average citizen as well. I would, I would like to say something. There's a lot of perception issue over there where the, they say the middle class. The middle class is much larger than this one crore number. So if one crore people only are paying taxes and are out of which I would believe there are very high net worth individuals also who are paying taxes. So we should actually analyze data, go granular and see what is it that we are required to do. Okay. The other big request that came in from industry and both Shubhrakant and Sanjeev Mehta talked about that was the government continuing to do its bit as far as uh, CapEx is concerned, heavy lifting on CapEx. In light of what the economic survey has also said and what the various estimates are, what do you believe the CapEx number could potentially look like? You're smiling but I'm, 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 asking, I'm asking you for your best guess. <laughs> Okay, let me answer that in a roundabout fashion. One thing which I would say is that the government has done a great job on CapEx. I was just looking at the figures in 2021 when we were going through the COVID year. Uh, our revenue expenditure went up by almost 30 odd percent. But the capital expenditure also in that year went up by 27 percent. So normally uh, the tendency would be when the revenue expenditure is going up, so you conserve revenues. So how, what do you do? You curtail your capital expenditure. If the government did well then, I see no reason it will not do well. So 7.5 lakh crores number uh, should go up. But another... What, to 9, 9.5? Yeah, it is quite possible that it may touch between 9 and 10. But let's see what the government finally decides. But one thing which I would like also like to say is that last year, government gave 1 lakh crores to the states. And that was very important because the state's fiscal deficit was touching more than 3. And in the coming year, it is expected to go down further. So I think there is a now a, also a case where the states should be cajoled to spend from their own uh, kitty rather than 
taking money from the uh, center. The center may continue to give some incentives to the states to spend capital expenditure, but I think the focus overall of the government would remain on capex. On tax, and I think, uh, you know, Jahangir Aziz put this very well on the program earlier this morning, saying that the last two years the government has systematically underestimated its tax collections and over-delivered on, on that. Uh, given what we've heard uh, so far and, and the estimates that the survey has put forward as far as uh, nominal growth is concerned of 11%, what would you put your number on? You're talking of the growth rate? Yes. I think and, it, and, and buoyancy. So I would say the growth rate would be closer to what uh, Anand has mentioned in the survey. And he's been very pragmatic on that. And uh, on the revenue figures, I would say that the last two years have actually shown us. And uh, I bet I know Jahangir very well. So I would bet all the economists to put their neck out on the day one. Nobody told me that the revenues in 21, 22 would grow by 34% on day one when the budget uh, came out. And similarly for the current year also. But I think what the Department of Revenue and the government have done, I think we can now not rely on a buoyancy of one, but we could look at a buoyancy of 1.2 to 1.25 on a, at least the coming year because there's a lot more that the Department of Revenue is doing and I think it will be a fruit for us. You know, I, 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 I wish I could ask you because that was my favorite question to you. What is the GST run rate going to be? Given the fact that we've done 1.56 lakh crore rupees and that number was released just yesterday. But what, what's your expectation from here? Last time when I spoke to you on this, I said we should expect an average of 1.50. So I think we are moving. In fact, I was, now that I'm not, no longer on the hot seat, I was expecting an average of 1.55 when I was talking to my people. So we'll be, uh, so the government will be very close to that figure of 1.55 between 1.50 to 1.55 on an average. And I think on GST front, the government has done a great job. They grew by 30% in the last year and growing by almost 25% this year. So that is what has given the relief to the state governments also not to be asking for a lot more from the center than what they have earlier been asking. Well, Mr. Bajaj, I'm, you know, you're going to be with us. Uh, Saran Bajaj is, of course, our budget editor, along with our star cast of budget editors, and he's going to be right here with me in the studio uh, through the course of the budget presentation. Sanjeev Mehta uh, and uh, Shubhrakan, before I let you go, Sanjeev, the, the one thing that uh, you believe if the government and the budget delivers on will be, uh, you know, will sort of really toss the ball out of the park, so to speak. You know, the reality, Shireen, is whether it's a business or a government, there's not nothing like one thing. You know, it has to be a growth-oriented budget. We should not be playing to the gallery. We should be focusing on the fundamentals. Yeah, while, yes, we have to alleviate the suffering of the poor as far as the near term is concerned, but do not take your eyes off the medium and long term. I think we have a great going as far as the growth rates are concerned, as far as reigning in the inflation is concerned, while uh, improving the fundamentals, be it logistics, uh, be it the public infrastructure, and that focus should not go away. Subrakan? Uh, uh, you know, the, it's again hard to, uh, to pin down one thing, but what I would like to see is, is uh, some sort of a glide path uh, towards fiscal consolidation while uh, making it clear that uh, you know there's there's not going to be any hard and fast boundaries and we will uh, react to the situation as it pans out during the year because there is much to be optimistic about uh, when it comes to india but uh, the global situation is is significantly different with uh, you know one third of the world's economies facing a recession uh, and and that is something that uh, i think we have to be uh, the, the finance minister has to uh, has to keep an eye on and uh, uh, and yeah. be nimble in in approaching uh, not just how we present the budget to, how she presents the budget today mm. but uh, going ahead uh, during the course of the year mr bajaj before i toss it back to our colleagues in bombay fiscal deficit uh, and you know the, the chief economic advisor in his conversation with me uh, last night said very clearly there is no reason to believe that the government is going to veer away from the path of fiscal consolidation and the fiscal glide path that has been articulated already uh, what's your best guess as far as FI24 is concerned? Sub 5%? Sub 6%? Yeah. 
I think it will be closer to sub 6 percent, uh, it will be sub 6 percent or closer to 6 percent. This is what my estimate is because I think the government will, has been delivering, has been over delivering on this aspect also other than the revenues. And uh, they said 9.7 in the first year, gave 9.2, said 6.9 and gave 6.7. This year 6.4, let's hope it will be 6.3. So I think next year should be less than 6. Well, uh, Mr. Bajaj, I will come back to you, Sanjeev Mehta and Shubhrakan Panna. Many thanks for joining us. We will, of course, check in with you post the Finance Minister's speech to see what Budget 2024 will deliver. Budget 2023 will deliver. But uh, the market's 351 points higher. That's the story on the Sensex. Uh, Prashant, Lata, Sonia, back to you. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Shireen. We'll keep coming back to you for more. The market is at the high point of trade right now, 100 points higher just a little bit around that 17,700 mark and clearly the focus is on growth that's the big engine for the market that you know we're looking forward to in this budget let's do one thing we'll talk about taxation no tinkering on taxation that's the uh, expectation at least the market has but we'll get you a big discussion lined up in just a bit on what the budget wish list is with respect to taxation we have Sudhir Kapadia the national tax leader EY Dinesh Kanabar the CEO at Dhruva Advisors and Rajiv Dimri the head of tax at KPN MG India coming up in just a bit.